common question that people are asked, and actually that people ask when they're new to Python, is what's the difference between lists and tuples? Okay, the simplest way to describe it, but also not the most helpful, is to say that lists are mutable and tuples are immutable. Okay, end of answer. But of course, that's not really where it ends. So let's start off with the fact that lists and tuples are on the face of it very, very similar. And you might wonder why Python actually needs both. And in fact, many languages that are not Python have one or the other. It's pretty common to have a, a list type in especially a high level language. So the fact that we have both does raise some eyebrows and makes us wonder, well, why do we really need both of these? So it's pretty common for starting off Python developers to say, okay, well, lists are mutable, tuples are immutable, end of story. Um, I've heard that tuples can be called locked lists, right? So, you know, locked lists, because that helps people to understand the whole immutability of them. But that's not really the difference. Um, the difference is, first of all, the fact that because lists are mutable, we can do much more with them. We have many more methods available to us. So I can say my list equals 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And if I now say my list dot in Jupyter and tab, you'll see that I have a whole bunch of methods available to me. And some of these methods actually go and modify the list. Append adds an element to the list. Clear clears the list. Copy returns a new list. Fine. Count, we're going to count how many times something exists. Extend changes the list. Insert changes the list. So you can see that the fact that a list is mutable means then that we have many more methods to choose from. If I say t equals 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So t dot, watch this. I have two methods I can call. That's it. I have only two methods I can actually call in a tuple. Now they're very similar in many ways in that they are both sequences. So I can say for one item in my list, print one item, let's say n, you know, n equals space. And that works just fine. And by the way, it'll work exactly the same way with our tuple. So where are lists and tuples are the same? Right, so first of all, you know, they're both iterable. Second of all, they can contain anything. We're going to get back to this point in a moment. Right, use in to search. Right, both have count and index methods. Count, the count method counts how many times something appears, and the index method tells us at which index from the left side something exists. All right, so they all they, they both have these qualities. They are both sequences, and so they both share these qualities. Um, and we can use, you know, I should say indexes and slices on them too, index and slice with square brackets. So aside from the mutable versus immutable thing, where are they different? And this is not a technical definition. This is a sort of cultural definition. So lists are for sequences of the same type. And tuples are for sequences of different types. Now, as I like to say, the Python police are not going to arrest you if you use them in the wrong way. But it's pretty darn common to see them used in this way. So you'll have a list of, you know, files, integers, file names, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, strings, that sort of thing. A list of things over which you're going to iterate one at a time, and every element in the list will be of the same type. Whereas the tuples are used for structs or, you know, uh, if I'm retrieving from a database, I'll get the records. Right? So that sort of thing is where I'm going to be seeing them. And that's because a tuple can have, or it traditionally will have, different types of data inside of it. So it's okay to have a tuple representing a person. You know, I can say p equals, you know, we'll say here, you know, Ruben and Learner, and my shoe size is 46, right? It's pretty normal to have two strings and an integer there, simply because, well, we're going to have those different types together, and this represents a record. Whereas if you're going to have a list, you could do it. There's technically nothing stopping you from doing this, but of course it'll, it'll look a little weird. So if you have a retrieve from a database using Python, you will almost certainly get a tuple, or if you get many rows, you'll get a list of tuples. And that's where we actually see things a lot. We see lists of tuples used to represent uh, repeated uh, records or uh, key value pairs, that sort of thing. You know, if I create a dictionary, D, A1, B2, C3, I say now D dot items. Well, D dot items returns actually an iterable, but if I say list of D dot items, I will get a list of tuples. And granted, I created the list here, and Python 2 actually did return a list. 
now it's an iterable, so it's just, you know, sort of hiding the list that would be there. So lists of tuples, super, super common. Lists of lists, also common, and but tuples of lists, that, that's kind of weird. You're not going to see that very often, if at all. Um, the other thing is, because lists are mutable and tuples are immutable, lists sort of allocate some extra memory up top when they are first created. Because who knows, maybe someone's going to want to add some elements to this list, and why should we not allocate some spare memory in advance? Um, so lists are a little heavier and larger, and because they change, then they can be smaller. Whereas a tuple, we know exactly how many elements are going to be in it from the get-go. So the right amount of memory can be allocated, and then we don't need to worry about changing in the future. Um, also, lists are then less uh, efficient than tuples, partly because of the memory thing and partly just because of the overhead. And tuples are actually used, even though you might not see it day to day, but tuples are used to pass arguments to functions. So when you call a function, the arguments that you pass to it are actually passed as part of a tuple. Um, and they don't use a list in Python because, once again, we're going to be passing different types. And the tuple is not going to change. You don't want to change the arguments that you're passing to a function along the way. Um, and thus, well, you know, why, why waste that memory? Why waste that efficiency? It is important to note, though, that a tuple is immutable, but it can contain mutable data. So if I say here t equals a tuple of 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. By the way, didn't I just say that a tuple of lists is kind of weird? Yes, I did, but you can do it. And so I can say t of 0, that gives me a list, and t of 0 of 10, 31, and that works just fine because I'm not actually changing the tuple. The tuple is immutably referring to two lists, but those lists are free to change as much as they want. All right, so just because a tuple is immutable doesn't mean its data is immutable. It doesn't mean that those cannot be changed either. All right, hope that gives you a good overview of tuples and lists. On to the next question.